Hello, hi, my name is Francesca. I am an Italian knitter, and this is episode number 12 of an Italian knitting podcast. If you've seen any of my previous videos, you might not recognize this location because this is not my usual filming place. We're currently at our summer rental apartment that we rented for this current month of August. We actually rented the same exact apartment last year as well, and we just enjoyed it so much that we were like, we're gonna do it again. My husband and I are both working from home for the foreseeable future, and so it's just so nice to work from home, where home is this home, and then walk to the beach when we can after work, and it's just so relaxing and it makes you just more chill. So today I'm kind of channeling my inner Erin from the Kuria Needs podcast. <laughs> she traveled quite a lot, I think, over the past weeks, months, and she filmed a couple of episodes from hotel rooms. And so I'm kind of doing the same kind of filming from a different location. And it just made me realize that we're so lucky as knitters because we can bring our hobby wherever we go. I'm here for a month. I was able to bring a few balls of yarn and a few knitting needles and I'm set. And Erin did kind of the same. I think she also acquired a few things during those few weeks, which was a great idea. I don't have yarn stores nearby, so that's why I'm not tempted, but I might order something online. Anyway, it just made me realize how lucky we are because we can just bring a few supplies and we're good to go. And I feel like if you were like a golfer, that's so random, or like a sewist, even if you are a crafter, but you need heavy equipment, like a sewing machine, I would imagine that it's not as easy to go on vacation and bring like a sewing machine in your suitcase. So I just feel very lucky. I also watch like a few podcasts, as I always do. And I was watching Inga from Knitting Traditions and Rebecca from the Crea Bea. And in their last episodes, they both reintroduced themselves, just a few words about what they do. And I was like, huh, I don't think I've ever actually properly talked about myself and what I do. So I'm gonna take 30 seconds maximum to tell you what I do, just in case it's relatable or interesting to any of you. I'm a software engineer and I work from home. I really love my job. I don't think I would switch it for anything else. I've been dreaming how nice it would be to own a yarn store, a bookshop, something fun like that, but it sounds like a lot of work. So I'm not actually thinking about it. I'm very happy as a software engineer. And as I said, I'm able to work from home for the company that I'm working at right now. I started this job actually just a few weeks ago and I'm really liking it. And I have a daughter named Emma and she's two years old. My daughter actually was born in the US my husband and I lived in San Francisco for eight years or so, and we decided to move back to Italy, which is our home country. So last summer we actually landed here and we've been in Italy for the past year and we've been enjoying spending time with our extended family. So my parents, my husband's parents. It's nice to be back home. It makes you kind of take a breath like catch your breath, I think it's how you say, like whew, you're finally, you can kind of relax. Um, we loved San Francisco, but it's just a very hectic city and it's very work focused and career focused, especially for software engineering. There are a lot of big companies, like big tech companies, and everyone is very driven by their work and their career. After a few years, we wanted to kind of step back a little bit from that and we decided to continue in our line of work, but from kind of more balanced perspective. So finding a work-life balance that we were looking for. So now back to Italy, daughter's doing fine. We're loving being with family. We're loving the food. We missed Italian food. Like our heart had a hole, like a pizza shaped hole in our hearts. There is a lot of Italian food in San Francisco or just in the United States in general, but it will never be the same as the one you experienced back home. Like maybe the ingredients might be similar, but the taste and just the recipe won't be exactly like the one you are craving. So nice food is a good side effect to be back home. Other hobbies that I can think of that are in my life are reading, which actually comes 
up a lot during the summer, as in at the beach or just when it's very hot outside, I don't tend to pick up knitting as much and it's just easier to open up a book and flip the pages instead of just holding yarn and needles. So I've been reading a lot over the past couple of months. I also love roller skating. I'm not very good at it and I also don't practice quite consistently to be good at it, but I really enjoy. I think roller skating is one of those things that make you feel like a child. I would recommend it. I, it's very weird to explain, but when I put like the roller skates and put like music in my ears and I just kind of stroll around, it's just so pure fun. Like you're not thinking about work or family stuff or like paying taxes and things like that and you're just kind of tuning out at least it is for me it feels like a form of meditation you're just kind of going and like laughing kind of jamming like this there are lots of videos on youtube or instagram accounts who post advice on tricks to learn and moves if you want to dive deeper into that world but i just skate around and that's fun enough that's it. I don't know if this overview was interesting in any way, but that's it. Let's move on into the knitting. So I am wearing my first finished object. This is the Peacock Tee by the designer Lenit or Lene Home. And I knitted this as part of our Lenit Along, which is a three months knit along that I'm hosting together with Icy from Orson Knits. We have a very chill knit along, but we do have an Instagram group chat where we talk about things that everyone is knitting on and what pattern they want to start next and things like that. So it has been fun. So this is the first finished object that I'm knitting as part of our knit along and it has been so addicting. The lace yoke part went by so fast flew off my needles. You just want to keep going until the next round of eyelets. Then you do have eyelets and then a couple of rounds of plain knitting and so you can kind of chill a little bit and then again with the eyelets and then you're done and it's over. The yarn that I used is Sunness Garn Line in the color blue. This is the official yarn that you see in the proper pattern pictures and as soon as I saw it I'm like I'm going to do it. I love blue in general. I think it's my favorite color, but I don't knit with it a lot because I wear a lot of blue jeans. And so I always felt like if I were to knit a top in blue and put jeans on, then I'll just blend in. Like it'll be like an uniform. And I took the chance of knitting a summer blue top because in the summer I have good options for pants that are not blue jeans and so that was my chance to do it and I quite like it. Today I'm wearing kind of um, beige pants. Blue and beige. <laughs> How do you say beige? So blue and beige I think are perfect pairing and so I'm, I'm loving this. I also love the yarn. Sunless Garn Line is my absolutely favorite, I guess currently favorite summer yarn. It is very soft compared to like 100% cotton yarns. This has linen and viscose and cotton and being the blend you kind of get the best of all these fibers. So it's still soft and light and breezy and approved and the price though it's a little bit kind of top of my budget even though i still don't know what's my budget but the entire top was 30 euros i mean 30 euros for a summer top i think it's it is a i don't know i don't want to say it's expensive because everyone has their price point but i've needed tops that were less expensive but I do love the design, so I think this pattern was a good one to kind of splurge, slightly splurge. And I'm very happy that I picked this yarn. Again, very light. And you'll see the same yarn a lot in this episode. So you'll see it in different fabrics and different stitch patterns if you want to know more about it. And I bought this from strick.it, which is an Italian website 
for yarns and knitting needles and knitting supplies and they are offering a discount for our Lend It Along so if you are in Italy and you want some of this yarn I will put all the information in the description box below for you to use a discount code if you want to that's it the only modification I've done is that I did a twisted rib here and at the end of the sleeves and a bottom hem and I feel like I always say and think twisted rib, but I should say half twisted rib because what I personally do is I twist only the knit stitches. So I knit the knit stitches through the back loop and I do my purls as normal. So I do knit through the back loop, purl, knit through the back loop, purl, and that gives me my twisted rib. And I think from now on, I know that I should call it half twisted rib. 100% recommended. This pattern actually has shorter shaping for raising the neck a little bit. So you don't end up like with something like riding up your neck. And for some reason, I thought that this pattern didn't have short rows. I think because the model in the pictures, I don't know, keeps her garment a little bit like with a higher neck or maybe just because this pattern has a little bit of a tighter neckline compared to other sweaters that I've seen and I don't know for some reason I thought that this pattern didn't have short rows but it 100% has and it means that it's very comfortable cool nothing else to say about this pattern I think other than I just really recommend it and I know there are a lot of other knitters who joined Lin It Along started with this pattern because I think it's just the most beautiful one that I've seen from this designer and it's just easy to knit. It uses quite thick yarn and thick needles so it goes by pretty fast and that's it. Oh something else I want to show you about this is inside the garment so I'll have to remove it so bear with me. I'll wear my next finished object right now. <laughs> Okay, so a little sneak peek of my next finished object, but I wanted to show you that I, for the first time in my life, I added a label. And this has been gifted to me inside one of my orders from strict.it. I'm not sure if they added to a bunch of the orders that they shipped out, but you can also buy it in a pack from their website. It says hand knitted with love and patience and it says in Italian, but I love the fact that there's a label. So it's easy to kind of identify what's the back and the front and it's lovely. It doesn't scratch my back or anything. It's very soft. And I feel like if you didn't want to buy labels that are already done, you could just probably sew a little bit of white yarn at the back of your garment and that would help identify what's the back and the front quickly at a glance, which I might do for like other garments that I have in my wardrobe. And I have a little bit of leftover yarn, which I hope to use for a future project. And this was the Peacock Tea by Limit. Moving on to what I'm wearing. So I'm wearing the Soho Top by Kaidre or Sabina. And this is a garter stitch top. And I don't think I've seen many garter stitch summer tops, but either just like garments in general. And I really like this stitch. It's quite like stretchy and flowy. And it makes the fabric, I think, a little bit drapier than any other stitch. So recommend if you have not tried a garter stitch garment. If you see one that you like, I would recommend going for it. So this is a top down top. So you knit the straps and then you join kind of everything and then you go up until the bottom edge in the round. So it's quite nice to be able to try the top on and decide what's the length that you want to go for, which is one of my must haves in knitting patterns. I do not like bottom up constructions. I think I've mentioned it a few times. And this is a test knit. I guess the pattern is now live and you can buy it for yourself. The test knit period is over and we all sent our notes to the designer and pictures and she's posting a lot of them to showcase her design. And the yarn that I chose is, drum roll please, <laughs> Sunless Garline. <laughs> and this one is in the dusty light green. 
so what you do is you do knit the top in the garter stitch and then you go back for I cords. So you have an I cord here, an I cord around the arm openings and then I cord edge at the bottom here. And something super interesting about this pattern is that the designer tells you the gauge for the I cord and none of the test knitters had ever seen an I-cord gauge in a pattern before and we all loved, I think, the fact that the pattern was that precise so that you knew that the result was gonna suit the garment. So that you knew that you were not gonna come up with like a too wide of a neckline or too crunched up and you knew that the designer had thought about this and gave you the perfect gauge. So, and another couple of things that are of interest are that when you knit flat, which is the top parts here, the front and the back, you knit every row. But when you do garter stitch in the round, so this bottom part here, you do one round of knit and one round of purl. So it's not super, super mindless, but it still goes by very quickly because every round you switch to something different. So it's quite engaging. But that's it. This was the Soho Top by Kaidri. Kaidri? Sabina. It's out now and you can buy it and knit it and it goes super fast. It also has kind of a detail here on the sides to give it more structure and interest. And one of the test knitters is Casey from Young Folk Knits podcast. If you're looking for a new podcast to follow, she's lovely and she also is so good with editing and filming. And just uh, the podcast that she puts out is like such a thing. Like it's a whole production. She films snippets of her journal and close-up of fabrics and close-up of her knitting. Casey also has done a, actually a top in a very similar color as this one, so like a soft green. So you can kind of check her out to see another example of the finished object. I put a label here too, same one as I put on my peacock tee, I put also on this one. And for this top, I actually have one skein and a half of leftover. So for test knits, I think they are a bit safe with yarn requirements. And so I feel like for some of the test knits, you have more leftover than you would if you were knitting like a fully tested and published pattern, just because I think designers want to be safe and want you to have all the yarn that you could possibly need for a test knit. And so I have an extra skein of yarn. So total, with the extra skin, it would have been 30 euros. It's the same as my peacock tee. But since I didn't use this one, I guess technically this is 25 euros total. And with the extra bowl of yarn, I'd like to combine it with other leftovers to make another top. Moving on to finished object number three. And you've seen this one 300 million times over the last episodes, but this is my finally finished Cumulus Tea by Petit Knit. This is knitted in Knitting for Olive Pure Silk in the color Plum Rose. And last episode, I asked all of you <laughs> for advice on what to do for the neckline. So what happened is that my gauge for this garment is a little bit looser <laughs> than what it should have been. Long story, you can watch my last episode if you are actually interested. And so the neckline appeared on my body a little bit too wide and generous, and I didn't want that for some reason. And so instead of an eye cord, which I thought would have been still too revealing, I was thinking about like adding a ribbing and kind of going in until I was happy. But lots of you actually suggested to do an eye cord, like the pattern calls for, but instead of the recommended number of stitches, maybe picking up less stitches and it worked wonders. I don't know why I didn't think about that or why I didn't think it was a super kind of viable option. I feared that picking up less stitches than the pattern recommended would make the fabric scrunch up around the edge and maybe it does a little 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 bit i don't know i feel like when i first finished it up and weaved in my ends 
I was seeing a little bit of puckering around, but now wearing it, maybe it stretches on my body naturally and it's perfect. This is exactly what I wanted and you delivered on the advice. Yeah, there's a eye cord at the bottom and there are eye cords at the sleeves and I think it's perfect. I feel like the sleeves maybe are a little bit balloony. I think what happens is that my eye cord is tighter than other people's eye cords and it kind of makes the cinching happening a little bit. For this specific eye cord at the edge of the sleeves, I actually did less decreases than the pattern called for because I've knitted this pattern before and realized that this edge was way too tight if I follow the pattern. And so I actually did less decreases, but it's still a little bit tight. It's not tight as in uncomfortable, but you can kind of see that the sleeve comes in a little bit and it gives it a little bit of a balloony very tiny balloony effect which i'm okay with it's not my preference but i will keep it this is now finished and over it took me a good amount of months this is a very teeny tiny gauge very teeny tiny needle and also i had lots of other interesting projects on my needles and this was just a very relaxing one um, because it is all stuck in it in the round so i kept it for busy times where I was watching my daughter or doing other stuff. So I didn't knit consistently on this for like every day in a row throughout the month. So I kind of took a back seat and it was the perfect project to relax with. I feel like I don't have any leftover or maybe I have a teeny teeny tiny bowl. This is also top down. So I kind of went with the flow until I was happy with the length and that gave me little to no leftover. And for four bowls of knitting for olive pure silk, I think I paid 31 euros and 30 euros for a top. It's similar to the peacock tee that I showed you before. Again, I think they're both worth it. They're both like nice summer tops. They look good. So, I mean, I think it's worth it. The color, mm, I don't think this is my color. I don't think I love it. I don't think... When I see this in my wardrobe, I'm like, ooh, today I'm gonna pick this plum color and put it on. I mean, I think it's okay. I think I'm happy. I went out of my comfort zone when I bought this. I think it looked pretty in pictures and in kind of bowl form or in uh, garment form. On Ravelry, I kind of looked at other people's projects. I just, that uh, my preference is that I do not care about this color. I'll still wear it, but I don't foresee this becoming like my most worn t-shirt ever. And I will keep it on uh, while talking to you about my works in progress and maybe just looking at me in this shirt will make you love it a little bit more. So since we talked about what I'm wearing, which is a Cumulus Tea by Petit Knit, I'm gonna super quickly just show you <laughs> that I did really no progress on my other Cumulus Tea that I've been knitting. This is exactly the same thing that I'm wearing. It's just in a different color. I did maybe like a few centimeters here of progress. Again, while I was, I don't know, busy with other stuff, I could knit on this in the round as like plain stockinette. So it's very convenient, but I didn't do a lot of progress on this. Hopefully you'll see this as finished object in the next episode. But come on, I couldn't give you two finished cumulus teas in the same episode, so I couldn't speed up on this. I couldn't finish it this fast. So you only get one finished one and this one hopefully next episode. But it look exactly like this one. So this will have anyway the same issue of like a too open of a neckline for my taste. And so I'll probably do the same trick of an eye cord around the edge, which is done with less picked up stitches and maybe actually I can do something different for the sleeves. Maybe I can try shorter sleeves on this gray one. And Inga from Knitting Traditions actually doesn't do any eye cord edging around the neckline for her cumulus tees. And I think she also keeps the sleeves quite shorter than the pattern calls for. So I'll think about it for this next one. Enough 
said, we talked about this in the past as well, my real work in progress, as in the project that has taken my focus for the past few days, maybe the past week, is this one. This is the Ingrid Summer Sweater. It's just at the very beginning. It's missing an edge here around the neckline. It's missing the sleeves. It's missing the body. So it's just kind of the yoke, the top part. And this is by Gregoria Fibers. And this is also the first Gregoria Fibers pattern that I ever knit. I bought her yarn many, many, many years ago. I think she was only hand dyeing yarn at the very beginning of her career and now she also does patterns as a designer so this is the first one that i tried from her and the pictures looked so nice this is a summer sweater again knitted in <laughs> sun is garlene it's the same yarn that you've seen throughout this episode i'm also using for this sweater i don't have any summer sweaters that i've knit myself I have store-bought ones, but all the sweaters that I've made for myself have been like wool and mohair, wintery stuff. So this is, I think, the first summer sweater that I actually made for myself. I think that's true. Yes, I really, really love the eyelet pattern. It's also very simple, but it looks great. And you have some rows or rounds in regular stocking it, and then you do the eyelet row it's so entertaining because you just want to get to the next eyelid row and then you keep going and this same design also comes in a top version as like a sleeveless top and i like that too but i feel like i have a good amount of summer tops right now and the weather cooled down a little bit that makes me want to knit sweaters so i think this is a good transition from summer patterns into long sleeve garments. And I've actually seen a few people mentioning that if you knit the top version, the armhole depth is a little bit too revealing. I'm talking about Knits by Mandy on YouTube, which you should also follow, <laughs> as in like my recommendation is for you to watch her episodes or videos. She's so relaxing to watch and also very funny, very entertaining. And I think she finished quite recently the Ingrid top and she was showing that the armhole is quite open and kind of reveals the bra and i've gotten the same feedback from other people who knit that top even on ravelry and if you like the pattern and want a top version of this i would say maybe look at the ravelry projects and see people's recommendations and maybe do um, some modification for the armholes if you don't want your bra to show if you're okay with like a very open and flowy top with like maybe your swimsuit showing i think you can go as it is but if you want like a more normal armhole maybe you can kind of modify the pattern you can do maybe a tighter ribbing or a tighter cast off around the arms um, i've not knit that pattern so i don't have more specific recommendations that's it I don't know how this construction is called. Is it like a dropped shoulder? It felt like dropped shoulder should be this. I don't know, I didn't do research. I've only always done raglan sweaters and circular yoke sweaters where you have like a round of increases and then some rounds of stockinette and then a round of increases and so it's just like a round yoke. I've not done like a construction like this where you then pick up stitches and then you go forward with the sleeve. I'm gonna say this is drop shoulder. Let's do it. Let's commit. Strong opinions when I know nothing about this construction. And I feel like I will have leftover. I don't know yet. I'll finish the entire sweater and then see how much I have. But my thought is to combine all the other leftover colors that I have in the same sun as garlene and do a top. So I was thinking a stripey top, like stripes. So maybe something like this Soho top. So maybe something like this, but with stripes. 
But then I saw Rachel from the Night Sky Knitting Podcast showing a color block top. Amazing. It looked so good on her. And she's done the drinks on the patio crop pattern, I think. I'm not sure if I'll do that one, but I have the pattern for the Soho top. And I have other patterns that maybe I can adapt and make it into a color block. Top. We'll see. I also don't know if I will still be inspired to do another summer top before this current summer is over or if I'll keep this for next summer. And that would be it for our works in progress. I actually have a project that has never actually started, has been a plan and then it didn't go anywhere. We went on vacation for a week in July and we had to take a plane to get there. We were in Sardinia, which is an island in Italy. We took a plane and so I was like, hmm, I mean, I don't need to bring my regular metal needles. I will do wooden so that no one could tell me anything about the fact that metal needles are not allowed. You cannot bring them on the plane. You need to leave them here at the airport and things like that. For this past trip, I took my wooden needles, these are Lique needles, and I've not used these for a while, like a year, more than a year. I got to my destination and I was about to cast on camisole number four by my favorite things knitwear and I couldn't actually continue. Like these were so slow and so cumbersome to use compared to my metal knitting needles that I did, I think, maybe like five rows, six rows, and I'm like, it's no fun. No fun to knit on non-metal needles. So this camisole number four has actually not gone anywhere. <laughs> it came with me to Sardinia, but then I brought this back as is. Don't come at me. If you love wooden needles, I think you should totally embrace them and just throw your medals away, um, but I think I'm on the opposite end of the preference. So wooden are not for me anymore. I love them when I started knitting a few years ago and I only had wooden ones. And I feel like now I could just sell this set <laughs> because I don't, I don't use it. I'm not sure if I will start this famous um, camisole number four this summer or if I will keep these two skeins for next summer, like spring. It is a good spring color, so maybe I can just leave it there and be inspired by the time that May or April comes around next year. I have a little bit of uh, future plans, which I'd like to share, and I like to share them because I want to inspire you and maybe give you ideas and things and patterns to knit, but also because I want to keep myself accountable. So if I show you things that I want to knit, then I am more likely to knit them and show them to you next episode. So bear with me. One thing I'd like to start this week actually are the Hemingway shorts. I actually applied to test knit these ones and I didn't get picked. I mean, I'm okay with that, but like I now finally grabbed a copy of the pattern. Actually, the designer sent a discount code along to whoever applied for a test knit. That was so nice. So I made like a little swatch and the yarn is Drops Bell, which is the exact same yarn that is called for in the pattern. And I bought this yarn for knitting a summer top. I didn't have shorts in mind at the time, but this is the exact same yarn and the exact same number of bowls that it's called for in the Hemingway shorts pattern, which I'm like, this is a sign, not a sign, but this is a perfect chance to use this yarn. And so I'm going to be knitting yellow shorts. I'm honestly not sure how frequently I'll wear them, but I feel like knitted shorts is anyway, something that I'll be wearing in the house or anyway in like a very chill setting. So I'm okay if there are like a somewhat weird color, as in like not an elegant color, like a blue or a plum or a white. I'm okay if they're a little bit fun because anyway, I'll wear them probably inside the house to chill on my sofa. And Drops Bell is actually more or less a dupe for the Sunness Garnline. They have the exact same composition 
the bell is slightly thinner like it has 10 meters more than the line but the composition is the same so i feel like if you see one of the two called for in a pattern you can switch it up for the other one i'll confirm after i'm done with my shorts but on paper and from people's advice these are kind of interchangeable the other plan that i have is to knit the peacock sweater by Lanit. And this will be my second pattern that I will knit as part of our Lanit along. And so the peacock tee is the one that I showed you. The peacock sweater has the same exact pattern, but is, surprise, surprise, a sweater. <laughs> I'm not funny today or ever. But yeah, you'll see from me the same yoke pattern, but long sleeves, and wool and mohair as the composition of the fabric. I don't have yarn yet for this. I'll have to get my hands on something. I'll probably order online and get it delivered to this rental apartment, like a little gift for myself. I also don't know what color I'm gonna go with. I have mostly neutrals for the winter time. I will try to pick a color that I don't have yet. I'm thinking an orange. Would an orange sweater with this pattern look great? Yes, you know why? Because I've seen this. Oh, on Caroline's Knits podcast. Yes, yes, actually. I've seen the peacock sweater on her podcast first. I think last year, or maybe even before then. And she has a beautiful orange version. Yes, so I'll copy her. And yes, let's see if I can find an orange color for the peacock sweater. Maybe an orange is a little bit of a change, which we could embrace. Or maybe it'll end up like this plum shirt, which I'm not excited about. We will see. I actually don't have acquisitions for this episode. I mean, the Sunness Garn Line that I'm using for the Ingrid summer top is technically an acquisition because I got my hands onto these skeins after I filmed my last podcast episode, but um, I'm already using them. So you've seen this before, so this is useless. And that's it. I hope you're doing very well this summer. Actually, you know what? There are people for which it's not summer right now. And I'm thinking about you, Ira, from the Cookie Needs podcast, which you should also watch, should. Keyword, should watch. She's been knitting a lot of winter stuff because she's in Australia. I mean, the stuff that she knits is just too complicated for me. Lots of cables and things that I don't have enough brain power for those. So if you actually want to be entertained by more complicated stitch patterns, go to her. I need to channel her winter time energy and she'll be transitioning into summer stuff. Yeah. So this episode was for you, Ira. Enjoy all the summer knits. Put them on your list. And that's it. I hope you are doing very well. I hope you're taking care of yourself and finding some knitting time in your day or in your week or some friends time, some cooking and eating good food times, some walking outside and breathing fresh air, roller skating maybe. If it's summer, if it's winter, it doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is that you knit. It was a pleasure to show you a few of my things that I've been knitting on and finishing over the last few weeks. I hope to see you again with a few finished pieces. Thank you for sticking around. Bye friends and enemies.